Welcome to the deep dive. We're diving into some pretty deep waters this time, folks, all about how technology is shaping our lives in ways we might not even realize. And to guide us on this little journey, we've got Neil Postman's Technopoly and Nolan Gertz's Nihilism and Technology. Talk about some thought-provoking reads, right? You hit the nail on the head there. And, you know, the thing that really struck me is how both authors seem to be wrestling with this, well, this fundamental pension we have with technology. Mm. Like, we're obviously drawn to all the good stuff it brings, making our lives easier, connecting us instantly, all that jazz. But then there's this nagging feeling, you know? Oh, it's like, totally. It's like that feeling you get when your phone finally dies and part of you is freaking out, but then there's this other part that's like, ah, peace at last. <laughs> exactly. It's like we can't live with it, but we can't live without it either. And Postman, he really gets to the heart of it with this ancient Greek myth about the invention of writing. Oh, yeah. The one where the king's all suspicious of this newfangled writing thing, right? <laughs> like, he's worried it's going to make people intellectually lazy. That's the one. And you know what's crazy? It's like Postman could have written that myth yesterday. Swap out writing for smartphones or the internet. And it's like, boom, instant commentary on today's world. It's so true. Like, think about it. How many times a day do we just Google something instead of actually trying to remember it or figure it out ourselves? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a good Google search as much as the next person. Oh, for sure. But I think what Postman is getting at is that constant reliance on tech, it starts to change how we think, how we process information. It's like we're outsourcing our brains to algorithms without even realizing it. And that's where things get, well. Kind of creepy. Yeah, a little bit. He calls it technopoly, this idea that technology's values, they suddenly become society's dominant values. We start valuing efficiency over everything else, instant gratification over patience, information over wisdom. It's like we're so busy consuming the fire hose of content that we forget to actually think for ourselves. And it makes you wonder, you know, are we less insightful now because we have all the answers at our fingertips? It's a valid question. Yeah. And that's where Gertz's work on techno-hypnosis comes into play. Yeah. He's really interested in the psychological effects of this tech-saturated world we live in. It's like we're in this constant state of partial attention, never fully present in the moment because we're always plugged in, always scrolling, always refreshing. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's that feeling of being totally sucked into your phone and then you look up and hours have gone by and you're like, wait, what just happened? Exactly. And Gertz would say that's not just a harmless quirk of modern life. He argues that this techno-hypnosis, it can have a real impact on our ability to think critically, to engage with the world in a meaningful way. So not exactly a recipe for a fulfilling life then. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Technology promises us all these amazing things, but it also comes with these hidden costs. And it's up to us to figure out how to navigate that tension, how to harness the power of technology without letting it, well, harness us. And that's where things get really interesting, right? Because it's easy to just get swept up in all the shiny new gadgets and the endless possibilities. But both Postman and Gertz, they're really urging us to take a step back, to ask ourselves, what are we actually gaining and losing in this grand technological bargain? Right. Because it's not all sunshine and roses, is it? Like, we've all had that experience of feeling totally overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information coming at us from all directions. That's Postman's information glut, in a nutshell. And he argues that this constant deluge of information, it can actually make it harder to find real wisdom, real meaning. It's like we're stuffing our brains with junk food instead of nourishing them with, you know, a healthy meal. It's like we're so busy consuming that we forget to actually digest. Exactly. And, you know, Postman wasn't just some tech-phobic hermit, right? He saw the value of technology, but he also saw the dangers of letting it become the dominant force in our lives. So how do we strike that balance then? How do we embrace the good without letting the bad take over? Well, he talks about developing this, and it sounds kind of funny, but he calls it technological resistance. Technological resistance. So, like, we're staging a rebellion against our smartphones. Not quite. It's more about being mindful, intentional, you know, like questioning why we feel this urge to check our phones every five seconds, asking ourselves if there might be a more meaningful way to spend our time and energy. So it's about being more present in our lives, both online and offline. Exactly. And this is where Gertz's work on techno-hypnosis comes in, right? Mm -hmm. He's really interested in how this constant state of digital stimulation, it affects our minds, our relationships, our sense of self. It's like that feeling of looking up from your phone and realizing you have no idea how much time has passed or where you even are. Exactly. And Gertz would say that that's not just some harmless quirk of modern lives. 
he sees it as a symptom of a deeper problem, which is that we're losing our ability to be present in the moment, to connect with ourselves and the world around us. Which, when you think about it, is kind of ironic, right? Because technology is supposed to connect us, but it can also make us feel more isolated, more alone. It's that classic paradox of modern life, mm -hmm. right? The more connected we are digitally, the more disconnected we can feel on a human level. And that's where things can get, what? A little bleak. Yeah, a little bit. But, you know, both Postman and Gertz, they weren't just trying to bum us out with all this talk about the downsides of technology. They also believe that there are ways to resist these negative forces, to carve out a more meaningful and fulfilling path. You know, sometimes I think it helps to remember that technology itself isn't good or bad. Right. It's all about how we use it. Right? Exactly. It's like fire, you know. Mm -hmm. You could use it to cook a delicious meal or you can use it to burn down your house. Okay. That's a pretty intense analogy, but I get your point. My point being, we have more control than we think we do. We get to choose how we let these technologies shape our lives. So where do we start? What are some practical things we can do to make sure we're using technology in a healthy, mindful way, you know, without becoming hermits who swear off all screens forever? Well, first off, ditch the guilt trip. Yeah. Nobody's perfect at this. <laughs> it's not about achieving some kind of tech-free nirvana. It's about making small, sustainable changes. Like, have you ever heard of the digital detox thing? Oh, yeah, like unplugging for a whole weekend. I've tried it. It's hard. It can be. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be that extreme. Start small, right? Maybe choose one night a week to completely disconnect. Put your phone on airplane mode, resist the urge to check emails, and just, you know, be present. It's amazing how hard that is, but also how good it feels when you actually do it. Right. And that's exactly what Gers is talking about with embracing boredom. It sounds kind of boring, I know, but those moments when we let ourselves just be without any external stimulation, that's when our minds can really wander, when we can connect with our inner selves, with our creativity, with the world around us in a deeper way. You know what? You're making me think about those times when I'm stuck on a long flight with no Wi-Fi. Like, at first, I'm totally antsy, checking my phone every two seconds, even though I know there's nothing there. But then, after a while, something kind of magical happens. I start reading a book, or I strike up a conversation with the person next to me, or I just let my mind wander, and it's amazing what comes up. There you go. That's exactly it. We have to create those spaces for ourselves, those opportunities to disconnect from the digital world and reconnect with, well, with everything else that makes life worth living. So it's about being intentional, about setting boundaries, about making time for those things that nourish us on a deeper level. You got it. And remember, it's not just about individual well-being either. Postman talks a lot about the importance of shared narratives, those stories and experiences that bind us together as a society. And I think that's something we've lost sight of in this age of hyper-individualism and digital fragmentation. It's like we're all so busy curating our own little online worlds that we forget to look up and see the bigger picture, the shared human experience that connects us all. Exactly. So get out there, right? Engage in real life conversations. Participate in your community. Go to a concert. Join a book club. Volunteer for a cause you care about. Those are the things that remind us that we're part of something bigger than ourselves. It's about finding those real world connections, those shared experiences that remind us that we're not alone in this crazy, messy, beautiful world. Couldn't have said it better myself. This has been a phenomenal conversation, really eye opening, so much to think about. I agree. It's been great. And, you know, if there's one thing I hope our listeners take away from this deep dive, it's that they have the power to shape their relationship with technology. It's not about becoming Luddites and throwing our smartphones in the trash. It's about being mindful, intentional, and maybe even a little bit rebellious in how we choose to engage with the digital world. Absolutely. It's about reclaiming our agency, our humanity, and our sense of wonder in a world that's constantly trying to distract us from those very things. Such a powerful message. Thanks again for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. Until next time, stay curious, stay connected, and remember to look up from your screens every once in a while and appreciate the beauty of the real world around you.